On the 1st of August 2012, Microsoft released Windows 8, which brought major changes to the Windows user interface in an attempt to improve the user experience on touchscreen devices, such as tablets, which were becoming extremely popular at the time. In particular, a new touch-optimized user interface, colloquially known as Metro, after the name of the design language it was based on, which focused on clean typography and less UI Chrome, would be centered around a start menu replacement known as the start screen. The start screen was a full screen UI where users could pin app shortcuts, in addition to viewing dynamically updated content from within apps, such as headlines from the news app, on a large grid of so-called live tiles, a feature that had debuted in Microsoft's then mobile operating system, Windows Phone 7. The concept of a start screen in Windows arguably dates all the way back to the late 1990s, when, during the development of Windows Millennium Edition, or Windows Me, Microsoft tested out a full screen UI known as the Start Page. It was designed to overlay the traditional desktop and to provide quick and easy access to the user's most used apps and folders, such as the web browser, email client, and documents folder. Users also have the ability to personalize the Start Page, such as by adding or removing app links and applying themes. Though the feature would be pulled from Windows Me before the final release, it was simultaneously being tested in another Windows version Microsoft was working on at the time known as Windows Codename Neptune. Neptune was ultimately cancelled and the team that worked on it moved on to a new project, Windows Codename Whistler, which would be released as Windows XP in 2001. During the development of XP, the start page was tested again, but ultimately did not make the final release. Fast forward a decade then and Microsoft was busy working on Windows 8's new start screen. Although it has many parallels with the start page, it appears there was no conscious inspiration taken from the start page when the start screen was under development. Amongst the controversy that ensued over the removal of the start menu and what was seen by some as its cumbersome, overbearing and functionally limited full screen replacement, the Windows 8 team was busy listening to feedback and working on the next iteration of the design. The following year's 8.1 added some heavily requested features, such as power and search buttons, to the start screen. However, this wasn't enough to satisfy the disgruntled general Windows user base, and so for 2015's Windows 10, Microsoft backtracked, reinstating a more traditional start menu, although a full screen option was still available. Incidentally, it's worth mentioning at this point that there is an argument that if allowed more time, the start screen and Metro interface in general could have been improved past what Microsoft's president of the Windows division at the time, Steven Sanofsky, would later call a version one product. Unfortunately, in this universe at least, we will never know what Metro could have evolved into if given enough time to reach its full potential, although we do know that Microsoft was at least working on bringing interactivity to the live tiles, allowing users to, for example, control music through the music apps tile. In 2021's Windows 11, Microsoft put the final remnants of the start screen to bed, doing away with the Windows 8 and 10 era's live tiles, as well as the option for a full screen interface, instead returning to a simpler, icon-based experience that's very reminiscent of the pre-Windows 8 start menu, and not at all of the start screen. 